good rising. I'm feeling tender and raw. Um, my relationship recently came to an end. Um, I feel very complete about it with my partner, my former partner. We talked about it. It was like, it's just like a move that needs to happen, you know? Um, the way that I'm understanding and have am holding this experience is like, um, this year I'm not smoking. Um, I started smoking weed in, what was that, like 2013, 2014, um, it's been like eight years um and i started smoking out of grief um it was like a coping mechanism and so i carried that for the eight years and I, it came to a point where i couldn't imagine myself without weed right like who would i be what would i do with my time like i'm always the one who brings the loud i'm always the one rolling like i'm always lit um and I don't know. I, I mean, I kind of just like came to a space where I don't want to say I outgrew it. Right. But like it just I would notice that it was doing a lot more detriment or I wasn't growing much with it. And it was yeah, it was doing me more. I was sleepy, sluggish, not feeling really motivated because um, weed is an amplifier, I would say. Right. So that kind of reflected where I was. I wasn't I was kind of stagnant. So the weed was like a crutch for me to do something with my time other than whatever it is that I wanted to do. Um, or needed to do and so this year my ex and I committed to not smoking together because I, I realized it's really important to have accountability right to have somebody alongside you when you feel like it like especially if that's the person you spend a lot of time with right um and it's come to be like oh wow like I actually don't I don't need this right like who am I without this I'm really enjoying who I am without smoking and I'm learning different things about how I spend my time I'm noticing different patterns of okay fine I'm not smoking but where else do I go for crutches where else do I do x y and z so this leads us back to my relationship ending um we came to realize I've been with this person for five years we were together for five years we broke up I want to say for like two three months and then recommitted or rejoined in relationship and like, kind of fell into a partnership without defining the terms again. Um, and recently, we were having some conflicts that were just, like, really, like, intense and felt unnecessary. Because, like, we don't need, we don't, why does, it feels, it feels like I want to not be in this space with you, but I feel like I can't leave. And I was like, oh, wait, these are old feelings of, like, attachment coming through again where like can't live with you can't live without you but and don't know how to like give it space to breathe um and so I'm really excited to know who I am without this person because meeting somebody five I was a different person five years ago so different so different I met him in college like leaving college which was such a transitional point for me um and met him in a really not ideal context like there was just a lot of a lot of stuff floating around that would have that made that like made our relationship very circumstantial. Um Yeah. And so the reason I came into this tearful um is I woke up from a dream today where I was able to witness and feel the ways that I've tried to control this person's actions and manipulate them and influence them through whatever it is. Like be it, like, my emotions, be it, like, the way they think, um, what they choose to do with their time, like, and in little tiny ways. And it was, like, interesting to notice that and be like, oh, shit, that's weird. That feels uncomfortable in my belly. Um, and it kind of just came to me. The reason I felt I have felt so stressed about not, about putting space between us, about letting us just rock is because I came upon this belief that I don't believe that I'm good enough to be chosen. And as soon as I said that, you know, sometimes with the with the belief stuff, if you say the right one, it will just connect. And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, my dad has been recently telling me about early experiences with my mom when I was like first born. And that kind of echoed back to that. I've also seen the way my mom has chosen to live in her relationships. And it also reminded me of that. Um, and... 
I've seen how I've moved in different relationships and why polyamory was such a stressful transition for me was this inherent belief that I don't feel like I'm good enough to be chosen. Like I will not be chosen first or I will not be chosen in the end. I will be left abandoned, unwanted, right? There's like different versions of it. I feel like I've said I'm unlovable before or I, I, I'm not deserving of whatever. And those never really quite hit as I won't be chosen. Um, and that's a lot of pressure that I've had in my life as I reflect on the different areas where I've, where being chosen was really important. Um, cause it was always a symbol, an, an affirmation of acceptance of assuredness of your safety. If you were chosen. So obviously I'm really on this journey of like truly learning to choose myself because it's easy to choose yourself when you have somebody to fall back on that loves you right versus like if i have this belief of i'm not good enough to be chosen and now i gotta sit here and actually learn how to choose myself like what does it actually mean to do that what does it look like to really do that um it's a it's quite a tender journey uh so i just wanted to share that it it's quite a quite a interesting thing because a big fear of like I said it's just it's so crazy to notice that this was such a fear of mine and this is what was driving so many of these behaviors um, underneath and like obviously you know you do a lot of work and this is why you can never say I'm healed um, I do think there comes a point where we're not always healing like right we're not I'm not always sitting here crying and always sitting here reflecting um I've been learning the importance of living life right like you're not gonna I'm not gonna be able to choose like do different things and learn about being chosen by sitting here contemplating and meditating and all of that yeah I think it's important to choose myself and also choosing myself means like I'm gonna choose to go outside I'm gonna choose to you know not think about this right now and watch a stupid movie or watch something that makes me smile or go hang out with friends or dance or nourish my body you know um yeah so interesting and like i've really been grateful for community because it has taught me a lot about being chosen but even then i just noticed this is something that i feel a lot like i've always felt like i mean it's tied to just not being good enough like i think i've learned to and this is what it this is where it's so really interestingly nuanced i feel like i've learned to accept myself as like gary you're weird and you're difficult and you're challenging like that's a lot so i love you but now learning to accept that other people also love me and also just don't see me that way it's it's a tender realization um because I feel like for so long in my childhood, especially, I was so like giving people the stiff arm and people keeping people away and like learning to kind of learning to love myself in, in isolation because I didn't believe other people would. Um, which is not true. Like if I think about like when I think about self-awareness, everybody thinks self-awareness is just about being aware of your flaws and being aware of your shortcomings and the things you need to work on. But it's also knowing your gifts and knowing your impact on other people and your influence on other people and how people love you. And it's not about the other people, right? It's not, it's, it's about you. And also if you, if it was aligned, you would know your impact on people. <laughs> Like, obviously, we hurt people, right? That That's part of life. It happens. And also, you would know, like, if I would know that, like, I touch people's lives and it wouldn't make me cry when people tell me that. But to me, it's like, how could you feel that way when I don't even, I didn't even think that you felt that way about me. So, it's like a really beautiful process right now of coming into, like, feelings that I've pushed away. As I was talking right now to y'all, I'm thinking about um all the times when i was younger this is really more so around my blackness like i remember i would feel really weird about being black and having an asian mom because people would make fun of me call me adopted all this stuff and the only way my mom really dealt with it was by saying well i love you so you're my daughter so it doesn't really matter whatever anyone else thinks and so you know that's like a cool thing to feel loved but also Oh, wow, I just thought of another memory. But also, like, it almost makes me feel like only she could love me. Um, fuck everybody else. I love you. Which is, like, cool. But it's not, it's not, right? It's not, like, 
But these are the reasons you should love yourself. I'm thinking about something else when I had this moment where, like, I feel like my queerness came to question. I was really little um, and I was playing with this little girl literally in the closet and afterwards I think I got in trouble with it and my mom was like you got to understand like you know the world people in the world might not really fuck with that I fuck with that but people might not accept you for that and you know I just feel like it's created this split in my mind or this like understanding that there are things I do that people will just never accept but only particular people will accept so I can get love from those people but everyone else they may or may not love me, so fuck them. And it's interesting. That's just it, it. It doesn't work. There has to be some kind of you know. So I don't got answers for y'all right now, but this is just some where I'm thinking. Um, some things I'm doing to like kind of align the thoughts. I shared the thought with somebody, which was. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's nice to share with people um, these moments and be in community and see like, you know, to ask people, to to ask people if you can share and they say yes, and then you do and then they, they want to be there, you know, um, risky shit, but really, really beautiful shit too. <laughs>